gonna have to eat all day every day not like I don't already do that I'm sorry I keep touching my hair Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. My name is Adriana and today is going to be a very, very, very sensitive topic. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about why I decided to become vegan and supporting that. I am going to tell you some facts and some information that I learned that really opened my eyes. There's two things I'd like to say. Number one, very natural look for a very natural video. Um, and number two, this is a disclaimer, I'm not trying to in any way, shape, or form um, change your opinion. I'm not trying to tell you what's right, what's wrong. I'm not trying to tell you that I know everything. I'm not a vegan expert. I'm not an expert at all. And in no way am I trying to alter what you believe in and what you have always followed. Without further ado, let's just get straight into the video. Um, I know everyone has different views on this and I know if you know me, you know that I've gone through quite a few different food journeys. I've went through gluten-free, dairy-free, um, I've gone paleo, I've done Whole30, and I'm still doing dairy-free and I'm still trying my best to do gluten-free. It's a little bit more difficult at college. Last week I had a vegan presenter come to one of my classes and he has been all around the world. I'll, I'll link his information down below just in case you want to know more about him. He spent an hour in our class telling us everything that he knows and um, why he became vegan. Real quick, let's talk about why I decided to become vegan. So I used to research it a lot and I wasn't really 100% sure. I was like, well, what about my protein? Am I going to get enough protein? Um, what about with CrossFit, working out? What about, you know, am I going to be malnourished? But I was just really concerned about... I don't know, I was just concerned. There was something holding me back and then finally he came and he just opened my eyes and I was like, wow, 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 wow. The first thing he said was that our diet is a learned behavior. With that being said, you are raised with it. It's not something that is already in your brain when you're born. Um, you are raised to adapt to it. So if your parents eat a lot of meat or say your parents eat a lot of sugar or there's a whole bunch of statistics behind you usually will follow your parents footsteps when it comes to eating um so you know if you grew up eating meat you're gonna eat meat i mean you're most likely probably gonna keep eating meat until unless you change your mind that being said that's not like a bad thing or anything but you usually adapt to what is taught so we were told when we were younger drink milk you'll get strong bones we were told when we were younger make sure you get your protein in it's hard to get in make sure you're eating all your meat if you were to tell a three-year-old here is a cow here's a pig here's a cat here's a dog which one do you want to pet they'd be like oh i want to pet all of them because they love animals when you're young you're you're taught to love animals to show affection compassion emotions but then when you're raised when you get older and older older it's just known that cows, pigs, and chickens are farm animals that are killed for our meat. So here's a really crazy fact that stood out to me. 4,600 people are diagnosed with cancer. One third of cancer is diet related. That means one third of the cancer that's diagnosed is from what people are ingesting, what's going in their body that they're eating every single day, which means you can change that. You can change your diet you can decrease the amount of cancer cells that are within your body. This is a really gross fact, but cows have to put, there's machines that are put on the cow's udders. And what they do is they just keep pumping and pumping and pumping the milk. The machine does not know the difference between pus, blood, and milk. So most likely every milk that you buy from the grocery store has some sort of percentage of pus and blood in that milk. Now, I don't know about you, but I do not want to be drinking that. I actually, a little story about me, I used to get really bad cystic acne on my chin. Now, I hardly have any makeup on right now. Um, my skin is not the best. I have a pimple right here, but you know, my face has cleared up a lot over changing my diet. See some of the scarring? Nothing too major, but it's not the best. And that was from dairy. The moment that I cut out dairy, no problems whatsoever. Your body creates all the cholesterol that your body needs. So all this cholesterol that's in our meat and our dairy and our eggs, bad, 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 bad. You do not need any cholesterol. You do not need any more cholesterol in your body. Your body produces enough cholesterol 
to survive without any added cholesterol to it. Three glasses of cow's milk has the same amount of cholesterol of 15 pieces of bacon. Now, if I were younger and someone said, you need to eat 15 pieces of bacon to have a healthy, well-balanced diet. I would not believe them. Now, if I was younger and you told me to drink three glasses of milk a day, I would believe them to have a healthy, well-balanced diet. You need to weigh the factors, look up the facts, learn. I have been looking all over YouTube, looking at all these videos of other people becoming vegan, and obviously there's pros to cons to so many things, but if I know that I'm helping an animal, if I know that I'm helping my health, then I know that I'm doing the right thing. I actually, this is something very personal, I went to the doctor to get my blood work for my food allergies, and so I got all my blood work done, and it said that I had high cholesterol. Now, if you know me, you know that I exercise four to five days a week. I am a very healthy human being. I eat very healthy. I eat very clean. I drink only water. I'm I get a good amount of sleep. I am a young, healthy teenager, but I went to the doctor and I had high cholesterol, bad high cholesterol. That has to tell you something. I am 19 years old. I do not need to be having high cholesterol. So ever since then, I've been doing research and I've looking, been looking up other alternatives and other options to bettering my health. Your health is so important. The rate of obesity is rising drastically. 30% of children are obese, 65% of adults are obese. That shows you something that's bad, something with America is wrong. And I think a big signal is because we are not informed on what's healthy and what's not. But are you gonna take that step yourself and research it? 75% of the human population is lactose intolerant. Wow, that blew my mind. With that being said, when you are a baby, you have an enzyme in your body called lacta, which means you can drink your mom's milk and you'll be able to digest it properly because you need it. After you're done and you're old enough to not need your mother's milk at all, after you get past that age, the lacta enzyme dissolves. You don't have it anymore. So when you get older and you start drinking regular milk, then you're allergic to lactose because you shouldn't be drinking it. You shouldn't be drinking cow's milk because that cow's milk is is much needed for that baby calf that is for the calf not for a human think of all the options that we have food wise we have so many fruits we have so many vegetables we have seeds and nuts we have so much produce that we can get and we choose to take away from that baby calf that only has the option to drink their mother's milk so now that baby calf is malnourished, it is taken away from their mom because the mom is giving the milk to us and then the baby calf is malnourished and slaughtered. Now, after that baby calf is slaughtered, it still has growth hormones in it. So when your beef says no growth hormones or no hormones added, just know that you're getting all those hormones that that baby animal had because it needed it to grow into a full-size animal. You are ingesting those hormones, which we do not need either. 53 million Americans are diagnosed with osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is weak bones. We logo milk everywhere. We say, drink milk if you have weak bones. Milk is the answer. Have your yogurt, have your milk, eat your cheese. But yet 53 million Americans are diagnosed with osteoporosis, weak bones. There's something that's not weighing out there. Something is wrong there. The largest, strongest animals are vegetarians. Elephants, hippos, rhinoceroses, they are so strong. Giraffes, and they eat leaves. They don't eat meat. They eat plants. They eat everything that doesn't have a nervous system. If you have a nervous system, you feel emotions. All these animals you can say don't have, don't feel emotions, that is false. All animals have emotions. All animals have feelings. All animals know when they're getting killed. All animals know when they're scared. They know when they're sad. They know when they're happy. You can even tell by the way that they respond to you. These poor animals are suffering so much and, and yet everyone's just turning a blind eye because we don't have to watch it. The factory is not out here. I can almost promise you that if factories were in the middle of cities and they had glass walls, no one would eat meat. A lot of people would stop eating meat because they're faced 
with what's actually going on. I will let you guys know of recipes that I do on this channel. I'm turning completely vegan and if it goes south and I can't do it anymore, then I will let you know. I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys, but I want to be here for you guys so we can make a better change, we can make an impact on the earth, and we can help these sweet, sweet animals that do not deserve this. So, with that being said, there will be more food-related videos. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!